What's up, Go Enthusiasts? Welcome back. I'm glad to be back. It's been a while. I'm sorry. I was gonna make a video recapping the pro quals uh, that just happened, where I played very poorly, but it was difficult to make a make the video have a positive spin or to. I mean, honestly, my play was very, very suspicious. Um, partly due to like lack of sleep and such factors, but mostly due to skill issue. <laughs> and so I figured, since the video. Recap. I just couldn't make it feel good. Um, I'm just delaying it until I become a better player. <laughs> delaying. I, I will recap that pro calls at some point in the future, but I want to be a better player so I can look back on it and look at the ways I've improved from from those games uh, rather than to just present them now and <laughs> face my shortcomings. It's, it's too hard. <laughs> but the good news is there's other games of Go to commentate. And uh, this is actually a, a very nice one that was suggested to me by uh, my Patreon supporter, who is a Rui Naiwe fan. They suggested the last Rui Naiwe game as well. Rui Naiwe, one of the best female players of all time. We saw her play against Li Chengho last time. It was a really brilliant game. This is also a really cool game against Li Sedol. This was played in 2000 as Li Sedol was coming to his peak. Don't let the 3P fool you. Li Sedol was 3 Don professional. Uh, at the time of being world-class strength for, for quite a while, actually. Um, and this was played in 2000, in I think it was September of 2000, in the second round of the Samsung Cup. Samsung Cup, this was the second Samsung Cup. This is a really, really prestigious world championship tournament. Rui and I, we played white, Lisa Dahl played black. And you can see Lisa Dahl actually played the... Large, low enclosure, large night low enclosure, which was quite uncommon at the time, um, at least in comparison to all the other openings. Lisa Dahl was not really known for his opening preparation. He wasn't like, um, I mean, he, he was a very, very strong player, so he didn't make mistakes in the opening per se, but he wasn't like uh, making all the theory that all the other players were playing either. He was sort of uh, doing things his own way, which I, I really appreciate. Rui Naiwe was playing uh, more standard, at least at all backing up with the large knight's move, I'd love to see it somewhat unstandard again, and then going for the invasion. There's nothing wrong with the way that black is played, and ad pros at the time knew that this was completely fine to play. Um, AI docks neither player, zero, anything. It just wasn't really in fashion at the time, which is kind of uh, always fun to see. So... Invasion. I'm sure this has happened to some of you guys, right? You split the side, you play a three space, you get invaded. And I think for most lower ranked players, when this happens, you sort of lose the game as white. And then you're like, I'm not going to do that again. And you just two space the next time. Because <laughs> it's actually pretty hard to handle. So let's see how Ryu Naiwe chooses to handle it as white. She attaches here. This is actually a pretty rare choice, uh, particularly when they back off with the large knight's move. After attach, um, black will obviously Hane. And if they can take the corner, and have played this move that's like far away from the corner at N3. This is definitely going to be good for black. So we've got a cross cut here if you want to make this make sense. Yeah, I actually, I think most people probably expected to see Hane. In modern times, this is more popular. But this, um, the reason why Hane is played most of the time these days is because you see small knight. And then that stone is too close to the thickness. But when it's large knight, it's two spaces away. It's fine actually to have it two spaces away from the thickness. So that means that although white put some stones in the second line to be extra thick, that means white was like slightly inefficient, but black wasn't inefficient really in the same in the same way in this Joseki. So this I would consider to be slightly good for black uh, locally. So that's why we see cross cut instead. It makes sense. And there's a lot of variations that could happen after the cross cut, but the one that they choose is actually quite reasonable. And after seeing this game, I actually played this variation in one of my games as uh, uh, as white. I played the. Um, the whole variation out here, where white does not need to play this final Hane. So I thought this was really interesting, and in my game it, it worked just well. I, I, I think this is uh, a perfectly reasonable variation and, and quite clever. So originally here, after crosscut and black extends, now we're playing the same thing. You might be like, well, what, is, what does it mean? What's the difference? Because that cut has been exchanged, we're threatening to capture those two stones. So it's sort of like black still did a backing off move, but they're still not strong yet. And they have to spend another move backing off, which is the move that they play here. Otherwise, if black would play away, white can capture those two stones like this. And black, although they run to the corner, they cannot expand their liberties. White has three, black has two. 
black is gonna die. So black saves in the corner like this, and uh, last time we actually saw Li Cheng Ho play a Hane <laughs> in a similar situation. Ryu Naiwei understands that that was not a good exchange. He plays the correct move of uh, preventing black from breaking the white uh, eye shape here. Maybe strange to think that eye shape matters in this kind of situation, but it's also it's not just about the eye shape. It's activating that cut at Q3, making that more useful the way, and just generally running the white group out so that this black group is in trouble too. And least at all, he could just play away now. There's no need to do anything. He doesn't actually have to save this stone at R8, but that wouldn't be very least at all. <laughs> he runs out the stone. <laughs> of course, he wants to run out the stone. He wants to fight. These are two very fighting players and so we're not going to see them just tanuki build areas let the other guy have their stuff no 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 we're going to get a fight and white pushes here black answers like this i thought that was pretty interesting black could have answered like this this is more normal but both the n3 stone is not that efficient and later on white can still get that forcing black to answer inside anyway which is quite annoying when um the hane on the on the first line there it actually implies quite a bit of white eye space because black can't Atari there anymore and try to break it. So uh, answering like this, whoops, sorry about that. Answering on the top side instead of just extending, this was an aggressive move actually. At least it all likes to play this kind of thing where he's passive first and punching later. And, and he, let me tell you, he's, he's not going to give up on attacking this, this white group even though it might seem like it's quite safe. Well, Ruru Naiwe says, yeah, I mean, you, you didn't even try to surround me, so I'm not even going to bother to save that. I'm going to run out my stone on the other side and make it so that you're weak too. And we have this sort of classic variation where both players are running out. The reason why Black prefers to play that jump, you might wonder, well, if he was just going to connect anyway, why didn't he extend? If you extend here, a lot of the time you're not going to see White push from behind because uh, White wants to get ahead, right? So if White could do something faster, like for example, a sequence like this, this probably isn't the exact right way to do things, but as an example sequence, this is White getting ahead of Black without pushing from behind an extra time. So this jump, some people think it's like a mistake if White uh, peeps and you just extend, but actually that just forced White to push from behind one extra time if you sort of reverse the order. So it's completely reasonable, completely normal sequence. And now White decides, well, I don't want to push from behind anymore, so let me do the attach. Telegraph is talking about. <laughs> and Black plays the pullback here. Actually, this surprised me quite a bit when I was watching the game uh, before checking anything with AI. And it is indeed not correct, but it's least at all style. Uh, Hane, I think, is the natural move for everybody um, at, at this level. Everyone knows that, oh, yeah, I should Hane because it makes the bigger shape on the right side. And the problem with this one is that now the amount of right side that Lisa Dahl is taking is just acceptable. Like, White doesn't have to do anything to invade or, or break the right side anymore because Lisa Dahl has taken it so low that it's not actually particularly efficient, right? And in a way that, um, yeah, I mean, we now we can ignore. But if this had happened instead, then probably she'd have to be more active and really try to press this down and do something about the bottom right corner uh, in, in a different way. So instead, by playing like this, yeah, the territory that Lisa Dahl is building is much less threatening. However, his power in the fight is much more threatening because he doesn't have to worry about having a cutting point anymore. So that means he can jump out, he can save his own group, and he's really trying to say, when I jump here, that group or that group are going to get attacked. Deal with it. <laughs> so I was like, okay, man, chill. I'll run out with my group. You know, it's a valuable move. And he's like, deal with it. I'm on top of you handle something you know like uh, how are you gonna run this group out so that you don't give me like a big bottom right corner or a lot of strength with the the group in the center it's really a, a powerful attack it makes a lot of sense this is the way that you should play if you decide to extend back lisa doll is very good at um backing up those kinds of aggressive and thick decisions so Ryunawe actually has a pretty tricky decision here. How would you de decide to run out this group? I mean, you could just run it out simply with a diagonal one space jump, something like that. But it's easy for those kinds of moves to just be less efficient than the black moves that are um, attacking you if they go to like not very valuable areas. So Ryunawe is like, well, the valuable area should be the bottom right corner. So I'm going to rush there, like really, really rush there. <laughs> she she goes all the way to the bottom right corner immediately and prevents it from building 
uh, in any like meaningful way and says, hey, if you want to try to cut this, I'm going to be able to counterattack that. So I'm fine, right? I'm fine. You can't build your bottom right. How are you going to attack me? And Lisa Dahl does the type of attacking that uh, we actually saw in my book review video. <laughs> you can check that one out. I'll, I'll link it here. Uh, he plays this move, which I thought was a really brilliant attacking move. I couldn't actually think of it when I was looking at the game myself. I was thinking of all these sort of like weirder, looser attacks, but this is just very straightforward with the simple idea that white should connect to the stone they just played, jump, a normal jump or push or something like that was going to happen, and then black is going to play here. And that's going to threaten white's cut, so white's going to fix that. And then by playing these couple moves, you thicken your shape on the right side, you prevent white from getting any obvious eye space, and you just continue to surround. So this way, black approached this white group, they tried to attack, but they tried to attack with only moves that they valued themselves, right? So like black's two stones here are directly building and benefiting his own territory in, in the bottom right and his own like power and presence in the area where white wanted power and presence right there to be able to make some eye space, I'm sure. And then he can go over here. None of the black stones end up misplaced from this attack. There's no way that white could have made them misplaced. So it's a very, very sensible attack. It puts a lot of pressure now on white that they still have to run somehow. So decides very naturally to just jump, play a normal, this is actually called the dog's face shape. <laughs> when you have the like two two knight's moves separated by one space jump. And black played attach here. Yeah, this move is also out of my expectation, but it also makes a lot of sense. This is the same thing. He's putting a stone where, I mean, it's going to be fine for black, but white, on the other hand, is sort of getting tripped up. If white would directly Hane here, then that would leave a cutting point behind, which is actually quite painful and hard to deal with when you have a whole weak group near. So then you might think, well, if I can't Hane, I should just extend, right? That's the normal way to do things. But if you extend, black will make it not that easy to be able to run to the bottom side. So how do you go to a valuable area if they attach to you and, and both ways that you want to play, you don't actually get to a valuable area? Well, you have to define another valuable area first. The green eye plays attach here. It was actually brilliant. I love this move. Uh, Lisa Dahl's attacking is very scary. <laughs> It's very easy to get on the wrong end of things here. But Rui and I had a great understanding of how these different areas could affect each other. Yeah, you attach to me, so that's valuable. But what if I attach to you? That's valuable too, right? And Lisa Dahl actually didn't want to answer this. He just played away. He played a Hane to follow up on the original thing. If he would have instead followed with Rui plan, Hane tried to kill this P17 stone she would cut, and then it's possible for black to capture those two stones. However, this is a big failure for black. First of all, white's Atari here. It's quite painful to break the shape on the right side. But more importantly, even if it just goes like this, white is very clearly creating a successful sacrifice of those two stones and managing to make it so that this black attachment actually doesn't do anything. It used to be so scary that it was creating cutting points, restricting white. And now, white is just cleanly getting out, and there's no restriction to be had. So, black didn't respond. Black played on the outside instead. It's definitely better. And Rui Naiwe played this move, push. She's adding as much thickness as she can to the main thing that she cares about, and creating uh, follow-ups as much as she can in the center and on the bottom side, trying to make sure that this group is as savable as possible. If she would answer and sort of compress herself according to Lisa Dahl's you know, <laughs> desires, it's not going to be good. And it's much better that she outlines her, her own best shape by pushing against all the boundaries that Lisa Dahl has and trying to get him to answer. It's always a very aggressive way <laughs> that uh, you have to play when you have a very weak group like this. So Lisa Dahl plays here, is aiming at a cut directly to uh, cut this knight's move and kill the white tail. So white plays here to stop it. Now if black would cut, then obviously this one cutting stone would be in big danger, so he needs to connect to that stone first. And white can Atari. This is the point of the push here. So even though you can Atari that stone, I don't have to care about that stone. I can instead just care about my connection. And as long as I can uh, Atari, if you would answer this Atari, I'm going to be able to build a really nice shape on the bottom side. I'm going to be able to get there first. I'm going to be able to play against your corner and that one stone at 017. That's pretty annoying to... Uh, black. 
So black decides, okay, let me fix my corner. And it's very, very sensible. It's the right timing to go back to fix the corner, but white gets to capture a stone. And when white captures a stone, this should be pretty safe. Except it's decent at all. <laughs> it's not safe. <laughs> he pushes here. With the stone that's just about to be cut, he says, uh, you should answer me. <laughs> and this is actually really dangerous still for white. Since Lisa Doll has already answered on the bottom right side, it's not that easy to, to get a lot of eye shape here, a lot of eye space on the bottom side. So white uh, asks to trade back like this. I thought this was a really interesting move because um, it came with a very forcing sequence afterwards. Black pretty much has to push through here. Uh, he could have chosen to block like this, but then when white cuts, then black would have to answer to keep this white surrounded, and white could come back to cut these two stones. And in general, if you ask to cut your opponent, and then they answer that by killing you and not answering like the actual cutting threat, you're pretty sure to have lost a lot of value. This is really, really bad exchange to just throw a stone into the white eye space here. So instead we had this push through and a cut like this, which pretty much forces white to connect through on the outside. Otherwise, if these white stones would get surrounded, then uh, the whole black group on the outside would be completely safe, and that would make even this white group become weak again. It, it wouldn't be worth it to break the bottom side where black would not suffer very much anyway. So white has to break through here, and that means that black can cut that one stone. Which means black is now safe. This cut has successfully worked, actually. White, white is cut. White is separated into two pieces. There's the group on the outside, on the top side, and the group on the bottom. But when I was judging this by myself, I thought that this was a big victory for white. Because although black has some of orig original territory, the attack that was supposed to happen now seems more like a defense of those th stones on the top side. And white gets this Atari, which is so painful to have to answer and connect to, because the move that black is answering with, this capture, is not very valuable. It doesn't really gain anything that black didn't have before. And the Atari that white did, it gives white a lot of momentum into the center, which makes it much easier to imagine the black group. It might have a very hard time to run out when white can run out on top of it. So I thought that white should in general be feeling like they're on top. However, there is this problem of the group on the bottom side, <laughs> which looks kind of dead, right? I mean, those, those white stones on the bottom, it wouldn't be a huge surprise for this whole area to become black territory, in which case this game is totally going to be fine for black. So why I think white was winning is because white can do something here. White can attach like this. This is a nice way to try to start something. Black descends, and then white tried attaching in the corner. This is really interesting. Uh, white is going to try to save something. <laughs> try to save uh, a corner group, try to save her original group. Black is ruthless. Peep, double peep. What are you going to do? And white just tried to connect on the outside. Black can extend once. White is forced to answer, and then uh, by turning here, black effectively connects those two stones to the rest of his group. The corner is pretty much dead, and white can run out on the bottom side. So white managed to save the original group here. Even maybe you can get some territory, but you have some real thickness problems on the bottom side. This, this is pretty attackable. And black got sente, so black can come back to run out his, his weak group on the upper right corner. This was actually a bad result for white. I thought it was a good result. Uh, I was wrong. It's a bad result. I did notice that white had made a mistake. This attach and then playing here is uh, contradictory. It's, it can't be the right way to play because if you would just play originally instead of attach here, black can only do the same kind of thing, but worse, <laughs> where um, this saving is much, much harder for black to do if he hasn't gotten this exchange where he does this and, and white gets to play here. This allows black to eat the three stones. But if instead white would just connect like this, then the black three stones are in, are in big trouble. So the exchange of 3-3 three, three for 4-4 four, four here, it turned out to actually be really effective for black at saving his stones on the bottom. If, if it hadn't been done, then black would have had to be significantly more passive and allow white a much, much stronger shape 
um, when it comes to saving the group on the side. So why did Rui Naiwe do this? I think that she changed her mind about something. I think originally she had probably planned to connect here, which looks very, very fierce. And in fact, if Black tries to cut that, Black is in no end of trouble. I mean, this is uh, really, really, really not going to work for Black. We can even just run out and chase this first, and eventually later we can always play that forcing move and live in the corner. And yeah, this is doomed. <laughs> if White lives that big and only dies that big, then this is almost more White territory than Black. So uh, yeah, there was no chance if White connected here that Black was going to cut. Black was instead going to play the move that White played and try to connect through the two stones to the left side instead, which would have allowed White to play connect, but then locally this group is not gonna live. Uh, this is not a big enough eye space. This is known as the L shape in the corner. And that's known as dead, even if white spends another move. So it's it seems hopeless. The good news is white can try to play this Hane and connect first. And then um, black can't really cut because there's a snapback and a threat here. So black can only try to attack this from the bottom side where he can play this turn. We can exchange this to make things clear. And this is now an L plus one shape for white. But it's an L plus one shape where black plays first, so black can try to kill that. And locally, this is indeed going to die. There's two ways to kill it now. Um, it, the correct method in this case is to kill it with the bent four, actually, because the other one would give white some Aji on the side. And the main thing that white is going to do now is they're going to save this and try to capture race her locally dead group, the bent four, in the corner against the black group on the right side. However, it's a little problematic <laughs> that black can play here and here, and eventually, even though white can try to attack this group, it's Seki, which means that this white group, which was locally dead, is going to be globally dead. And finally, like as, <laughs> as the game goes on, this should turn out to be good for black. I mean, this is all going to be black's territory. That Seki will even be temporary. So, probably she saw that. She originally thought, oh, I'm going to try to live separately. But then she realized, even though I can connect here, and even though I can play like this, and connect while answering, I'm only going to get an L plus one. And unfortunately, um, I can't get enough counterattacking potential to save my group by, by racing either of these black outside groups directly. Which I think is true. Um, for some reason, my AI suggests to still connect here. But I honestly don't understand why. And when I play out sequences, it tends to think they're good for black. So <laughs> I, I think Rui Naiwe was, was correct here to back off and play like this. It just is unfortunate that the original 3-3 sort of had an incorrect plan. She thought she could probably save in the corner, but it just turns out just barely she didn't have enough resources and she had to sort of bail out and instead save on the side. Okay, the game goes on. So it turns out actually black has a slightly good result here. I thought it was white, since white managed to save. Black doesn't have that much intimidating territory. Black still is somewhat weak here. But white doesn't have that much territory either. White is still somewhat weak here. The game is close, and, and maybe black has a slightly better position at, at best. <laughs> uh, if he did, he doesn't when he answers this Hane. Uh, since he was already so strong in the corner, there was no need to add another move of, of uh, power to that corner instead of like adding another move just randomly somewhere in the center. This would have been much, much more efficient to be able to take care of the group on the on the center in in the in the fight. Uh, comparatively, this stuff. I mean, even there's some counterattacking potential that you could go for. So uh, this Hane and the black answers here. They were quite suspicious. This is uh, committing definitely too much to the upper right hand corner. But the reason why Lisa Dahl does that is because he's the type of player who likes to bide his time, you know, get in a in an aggressive position. He's curling up his muscles right now. He's he's like uh, his legs are taut and he's ready to pounce. So when White plays here, which is the best move to play on top of this uh, black group, Black is like, hey hey hey, don't you think your group is a bit weak too? He doesn't just run out right away. He tries to squeeze White first, and White is like, well. I mean, yeah, it's a little weak, but look at your group. Your group is, like, practically surrounded. So when I answer here and you want to attack my shape point again, I'm going to try to surround you. It seems very, very natural for White to say, you want to run through there, that's your last chance, I'm going to get some stuff, you're not going to be able to attack me that hard. 
Seems like this should work pretty well for white. Elisa doll is ruthless. He just cuts. I couldn't even think of this cut when I was looking around for moves to play for black. I was like, maybe I can run, maybe I can play S7. That's a pretty nice vital point to try to counterattack. But I didn't think cut first. Cut first. It means you're going to put pressure on the outside white and the, the white in the upper right corner. <laughs> really? Green Iowa is like, really? I can just push here, right? And then, I mean, you're, you're surrounded and I can take care of my stones. So what are you going to do? These all had a really nice sequence lined up. He said, I can Atari here first. Which looks stupid because white can connect, but then black can connect. And you can see actually, normally such an exchange is quite bad, but if you were going to try to get this 87 move anyway, this just fills white's liberties. And the reason why Lisa Dahl wanted to get this 87 move anyway, is because this white group in the upper right is really in danger and white decides to save it now, which is correct. White could not connect here. I mean, maybe they could, but it would be really dangerous if black plays at S7 now. Sure, white can say, hey, I'm surrounding your group. <laughs> this is a capture race. Like, I have an eye. I'm going to be fine. But this move is probably Sente to just make it go there. And then, <laughs> yeah, there's several ways for black to continue to attack this. This move will likely be Sente. This capture race does not look easy for white whatsoever. I think white would be happy to get a Seki here. Uh, which is exactly why she didn't go for it. She just said, okay, if I'm happy to get a Seki, might as well just save myself uh, with territory, right? And with a potential connection to the outside. It makes total sense. That gives Black the opportunity to capture those two stones that White could have saved with Snapback. But Lisa Dahl says, no, no, no. I don't have to save like that. I can save on the outside. <laughs> he plays like this. Um... Rune just Atari is here. She's like, okay, if you answer, then I'll surround you next. I have so much power. It's going to be fine. And Lisa Dahl definitely does not answer. He just runs out again. And White captures. And then he captures these two. I thought that should mean this makes no sense for Black. Why would you exchange a couple moves running out for White capturing your stone if you're just going to save by running back anyway? But actually, it did make sense for Black. Um, because this... Capturing a stone. Normally I think of capturing a stone as making your group really strong, but this capturing a stone is right next to Black's what was already super strong. It was Black's curled, you know, <laughs> pouncing legs up in the upper right. So there's no reason to fear if your opponent starts trying to get their strength by going right into your, you know, uh, fattest, most wealthy area of power, right? The benefit that white gains by capturing this stone is severely muted. So by extending through to the center, black really controlled the more important area, the control that this group has to not be surrounded, the control that this black group has to just prevent a white moyo potentially happening on the left side. And these couple stones that white played, white actually still has to take care of that group. They actually made the white group kind of heavy and not really that easy to save at all. Well, in the meantime, White decides to play away, to play on the bottom side, which was a, a good move to uh, <laughs> preempt any black, you know, messing around that was going to happen. It would definitely have happened if this move wasn't played. In fact, it's still going to happen after this move is played, which is crazy. Uh, black says, well, that means I can invade your upper left. And those stones that you captured a stone with are my target. <laughs> They're, you know, directly getting attacked. Rune Iowa is like, I mean, come on, I captured a stone. How, how bad can it really be? And Lisa Dahl plays here. This is pretty interesting. When white answers, black just answered in the corner. I thought this would be not very valuable, but actually it turned out um, this was not slow. I thought that this was going to be too slow. I thought that, that black lost something here and white should be able to get... The initiative back when, I mean, she can take her next move anywhere. She chooses to run out like this. Makes a lot of sense. It's a valuable spot. Mm. <laughs> why, why did Black have to go capture a stone and, like, defend his corner now? Honestly, I'm not sure that he really did. Um, but the main thing that he was trying to prevent here is this idea that if he had played away somewhere, let's say here, then White might have tried this. And... Um, I mean, particularly after this, is it's it's very efficient. <laughs> this 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 can be really good, but even before that, that connect, and then the potential that White has to try to use the corner Aji to save the corner separately, 
is actually going to do something. Like here and here, if black just captures this now and white can save the corner, that might be bigger. I think there's other trades that white might be able to do in other, you know, various situations. One of the most important things that white can do is potentially uh, save this cutting stone and cut these black outside stones. So if that connect would be sente, then white could just attack a whole new weak group. So this, I mean, this definitely made black completely solid in a position where white was going to use a lot of different resources and, 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 and make some trouble. Um, it turns out that the connect here was actually a tactical mistake. So it was better at this timing to exchange this for that. And then black would answer anyway. And this position is just significantly better than the position that uh, Rune Iowa got in the game when she connected here and black did this. And the reason why is, is quite simple. This move that Lisa Dahl played is way better than this move. If you would cut here, you're just inviting your opponent to have many co-threats. Uh, many routes of reduction, regardless of co-threats, like uh, here. If this one happens, <laughs> you don't want to answer on this side, because then your three stones die. So if you answer instead on this side, then yeah, you can capture these stones, but Wake can connect here and get this Atari, and then later when this cut happens, there's more Aji that they can do. Later when this happens, they can save with an eye. So there were so many resources that White could have gotten by, instead of connecting here first, exchanging this and then connecting. It, it was kind of shocking to me how much better this Atari from the inside is, just being solid, uh, than getting the couple extra points. Because it turns out the couple extra points, you'd have to eat them inside anyway. So this one is more points and more strength. It's understandable, but not something that I thought of on my own. <laughs> okay, so in the actual game, Rui and Iwe played this uh, jump. If you were wondering why Lisa Dahl hadn't played a, a press beforehand, he was actually waiting for this jump. He knew that this is the most reasonable move that Wei should play. And he was waiting to be able to push through here, where he wants to cut something. And Rui and Iwe actually just jumps back and sort of lets Black get a good shape where uh, White's cuts are not that stable here. The reason why, if she would do this, this cut would definitely happen, and you can't easily Atari down, because eventually you can't play on this side, you're gonna get atari and connected, and Black would take all the territory. Nor can you play on this side, because Black and Atari and Ladder, like that. So it was quite an annoying shape. Rune and I just chose to back off like this. Sensible choice. Black played uh, Block on the, on the right side, which separates the white group, the, in the center from the white group in the upper right. That one was alive, so this means, okay, I can push through here, then I have a lot of strength. That means I want to chase your group, so let me separate it. It was also worth a lot of territory, so it was a big move to separate that. White runs out, it's normal. And here, uh, I was still, <laughs> I was watching this game without AI, I, I was still under the belief that white is doing better. Uh, actually, the game is quite close, but I was like, okay, if I were black, how would I want to turn this game around? How would I want to gain something? I was thinking of all these very aggressive ways to play, and Lisa Dahl shows me how he can make a good flow out of this game. It was really quite quite beautiful, actually. He plays through. <laughs> you can think of this as an aggressive way to play, but really the way that White is going to respond to this is not by like cutting it back or... There's nothing that's urgently required of White. It just sets up a position where Black is, is sort of sitting here and saying, Either I'll go to the top side next, or I'll go to the center next, or I'll go to the left side next. I don't know. <laughs> like, uh, uh, this move will be useful for any of those. It's sort of like the ear reddening move like that. Except instead of the ear reddening move, which by shape made no sense, this move by shape makes a lot of sense. To just knight's move through your opponent's sort of thin shape, it just sets up a lot of potential follow-up. So I thought this move was really, really, really nice uh, when I saw it. And Rui Naiwe pushes from behind, which lets black jump. Probably that's not a great exchange. And then she plays here. So her point when she plays like this is that she really wants to be able to connect when black Ataris. Otherwise, if she hadn't done this, then the whole white group can get in some trouble. But this move will help her, her connections on the upper right. And at the same time, she wants to eat this one stone from the outside. She doesn't want to just uh, play F3 and, and, and bow down and let black control the, the top and the center and the left all at once. She wants to fight back. But... Uh, Lisa Dahl is not really interested in this kind of uh, direct, you know, handling of these stuns. He's like, well, 
my point was not that I was going to be strong here. It was like I was going to be strong in the other places that matter. And I got to move to the left because you push from behind. So instead of saving by just connecting this dully, why don't I save on the left? He just attaches down. It makes a lot of sense. And Rune, and I was like, well, I can approach this from several different ways again. I said I was going to try to eat this one stone at, at four, so I may as well push up and, and try to surround it properly. So she pushed up, pushed here. Create some cuts. This black group is not going to be able to connect through the center anymore. White seems to have captured the whole upper right. And he's a little doesn't care. He just plays on the left side. And this, at the end of the sequence, you can see, okay, originally here, Lisa Dull kind of didn't know what to do. At the end of the sequence, okay, White has mostly taken the upper left, but not in a really amazing, like, crushing way. And Lisa Dull has taken the, the proper left side, and even has some more potential to attack the center here. And all of his stones look efficient. There's no stone that's like really out of place for Lisa Doll here. So it was a really nice sequence. And Rui Naiwe continues the game. Obviously, it's normal to just approach this group. We're attacking it. It's potentially cut. So let's keep some pressure on. And Lisa Doll plays Hane and Connect, which is really sharp. This is asking, okay, the upper left is yours, right? So <laughs> you want to take it again? And Rune chooses to do so. She was like, I could play here. This solidly protects the upper left, but it doesn't get as many points as playing here. Most situations, you would rather play the solid move because something else will happen. They'll threaten it from another direction. And then, you know, who cares about one point when you have this solid control of the corner? But in this situation, even this move is already super solid control of the corner. So why don't I get the one more point? It was actually a reasonably like reasonable way to play makes sense to fight for one more point like this i like that rui naiwe you can see her aggressive spirit is not just used on attacking all the time but aggressive even when just asking for one point as we enter an end game against lisa doll um but actually even this was incorrect because she could have just played away some somewhere to just choose a random move and allow this and allow this and allow this this is Unbelievable when I when I saw that the AI suggested this variation. You you allow everything, and apparently it can't live. Even if it pushes here, you play this move, and it is it's dead. And no matter which move that Black tries to play on the inside here is it's killable. Probably they were solving that Sumego, and Lisa Doll thought maybe I can do something with the outside thickness, and this is not clear at all. So actually. <laughs> Lisa Doll's strategy to play here, play there, play there, allow White to have the upper left, it pays off when White answers on the upper left again. And Lisa Doll is now, I think, in control of the game. I found it really nice to see how he exploits his opponent's control, his opponent's solid control of areas. You would think the upper left, White has that completely, I'm probably not going to gain there. But he knows I can gain there again by making them not really sure that they have it completely. And he did that exact same kind of strategy again with the lower left. So first we have this exchange, and then he plays here. Okay, you literally just bumped and added Giga Strength right next to me. Well, <laughs> are you sure it's yours? <laughs> can I have it? <laughs> If this was played after AI, then Rui Naiwe would have just played the correct move here without thinking. Everyone knows, nowadays, 3-3s three are omega valuable. Really, really valuable. They're so valuable you can play them in the beginning of the game. But Rui Naiwe didn't know that yet, so she played Connect here, which seems like a normal shape move. But it's really bad because Lisa Doll can play 3-3, three, three, and even though Rui Naiwe's cut here like works in a way, it forces Black to not be able to capture, and White can capture. So White captures two stones. Black can steal away the corner. And this is all just Black territory now. You can see White's territory is very, very reduced. So it seems like Black should just have good control of the game from now. Black managed to save his group well, force White down here. Black's flow has been really good. If we come back originally here, you might wonder, well, <laughs> I mean, Rui Naiwe is not a bad player. She may not have known that 3-3 is omega important, but she knew it was important that like Black will be able to save the group in the corner. It, it's pretty clear, I think. Uh, most strong players can look at this position and realize, all right, Black, Black scammed. That wasn't okay for White. So why did Rui Naiwe do that and not do another way? Well, she thought she was going to get scammed if she did the proper thing, which is block here. Uh, it looks like this will kill the two stones because you push up, Black can make some cuts, 
but nothing happens, right? So if nothing's gonna happen, it's no big deal. But the reason why she didn't do this is because she exactly saw this vital point that I think Lisa Doll would definitely have played of shoulder hit. This is a really nice move. If White plays to handle the left side stones at C13, after playing to play on, on the bottom side where they say, I don't have much control of the center, Black will use that to make a double attack where, okay, you play from the corner when you want to kill my two stones. That means in the center, I have some forcing moves, right? So if I have some forcing moves in the center, then do you want to let me use them? That's what the shoulder hit means. Do you want to let me get an extra forcing move? So technically white should answer this way and then allow black to split. Ah, but that's so painful, right? You don't want to get beat up there. So what if you push here instead? Then still black will make some splitting variation like this. Your two stones, ah, that's so painful. Can't do it like that. Well, then how do you do it? Probably white would have to fall back here and not even care to save that one stone and just play some other like floating move and let black capture it. I'm sure Rui Naiwe saw a variation like this and thought, that can't be good. But this was still better than what happened in the game. Because here, black, okay, they get some, some territory, but at least we got the nice, efficient moves capturing this, our corner. We still have some control over it because it's D17. It puts a lot of control of the corner, even if you don't spend another move. And yeah, you lose the left side, but losing the corner is just so bad. <laughs> it's so rough. So, okay. Rui Naiwe is in trouble. I still thought the game was close, but Rui Naiwe is in trouble and she knows it, so she plays this move, trying to make some story about the left side black group. And black, yeah, he Atari is here. He says, okay, we're entering the end game. I don't think that you can really attack me on the left side. I don't think that's a big deal. So let me try to get the little exchanges. Let me try to control the game as you go into end game. And Rui Naiwe is like, you don't think this is a big deal, really? Show me. <laughs> and she launches her attack. Um, the way to parry this attack properly, I still am not sure I understand, despite looking at AI <laughs> and like really trying to figure it out. I'm still like not exactly sure. But I do understand what Rune Naiwe is thinking, and I understand why Lisa Doll just fell into it. Because everything that he does looks very, very normal, even smart. This attach may look rather strange. The point is, if you can get the exchange, which Lisa Dog can get, and there was no way for White to resist, then he can push through and he can play this, and using that exchange, he can cut the White group surround it on the left side. So White now has to save that group separately as she continues her attack that was supposed to be on these stones on the left. So that should work, right? This, this should be good for Black. He gets so many extra resources to chase that group on the left. Well, White plays this Hane, and then she plays this cut, which is very nice order, very nice timing. It means black has to save his three stones, so he plays here. And at this moment, the game looks really difficult for white. But she found the one really, really nice move that I think even my AI underestimates. Maybe not, maybe there's some other way, but I think my AI just doesn't really respect how, how good this next move is. Cut, and cut is the move, and extend here. Extend here is really nice, because black can't really just connect lazily and let white uh, capture this one stone, steal away the left side, especially after being cut here. It doesn't really matter if you can cut white back, white will just have sort of made a new attack against you and stolen all your territory. Not really okay, so better to try to capture those two stones, but because she extended there, now she can make a squeeze where black doesn't get an eye back. And after that, she made that squeeze, anticipating because of the cut in the center, yeah, okay, I made the squeeze, my group on the left side is still locally dead, but I'm going to capture Acer two stones in the center. She plays here, which surrounds those two stones. They can Atari, let, you know, white has to extend, but they cannot run out after this. Because white doesn't have any cutting problems that black can uh, use. All of white's Tetsujis are gonna work here. These black stones are actually surrounded. White has five liberties and black has four. It just works perfectly for Rui Naiwe. Perfectly calculated. Black fills a liberty. White 
uh, Hane's first. This is precise to Hane first to get this extra forcing move, get the Hane, and then to fill the liberty. So it was four to four, so you had to fill the liberty to kill the Blackstones. And Black plays a couple more exchanges here. He exchanges here and here, and any Tanukis. What was the point? Well, he exchanged this Hane to make sure that White couldn't make any eye on the left side. That means that there's going to be a squeeze here. So now if White tries to attack this black group, it looks like it's dead, but it has this saving resource, this final saving resource, to manage to connect underneath the white stone. So you can see there's a connect and die. Even though the black stones die there, it only reveals one liberty for white, not more. It means that white cannot connect here. White can only watch black connect back on the first line. So that's why black could play away. And finally, the game is actually really close again. <laughs> really interesting. Um, White managed to break the left side while attacking this black. She got a lot of outside influence, broke a lot of territory. But black managed to save Incente, and that initial Atari that he played managed to capture stones over in Iway. So we enter a really tight and interesting endgame. White exchanges this, so that prevented black from connecting through on the first line, forcing black to connect through here. Obviously, if black connected through on the first line, there were more potential points. This is the right way to uh, exchange it. You wouldn't have exchanged the other way. And white takes that forcing move, and she plays to fix her top side, so that black can't go and capture stones there. Black pushes through, plays on the bottom side, forcing move, Couple of extra forcing moves. This is a pretty weird move. I'm not exactly sure why Rui Naiwe chose not to play this one. To me, it looks very obviously better to play like this. You would only worry if there's like a shortage of liberty that's worth a lot of points on this side. But this move, the amount of movement that it gives you into the center, will be worth more points almost assuredly than one extra cut. Um, instead, we have this one. And then Black tries to reduce the center. So he jumps in, White pushes. Black extends forward, and white tries to exploit the black cutting point. So if black has to answer this cut, white will start to make some territory in the bottom left part of the center. Black plays here, and white takes this time to make this forcing move, but black doesn't answer. Maybe you're asking, how could black possibly not answer? Doesn't that mean he dies of this whole left group? Yes, it does. The reason why black does not answer is because he resigns. <laughs> Why did Black resign? <laughs> Just suddenly resign when White plays a forcing move? Actually, the game is supposed to still be close, but in reality, it just broke. The balance broke. Because if Black answers this, White can now cut here. And the whole left, which Black was reducing just now, was supposed to be connected. Black could have just answered that peep, right? And it could have connected and reduced this all. Black is now thoroughly, thoroughly dead, and White is thoroughly, thoroughly winning. <laughs> There's nothing to do with this cut. Why well, just Taurus? And you can see this tiger's mouth is perfectly placed to be able to capture that. Actually, what Lisa Dahl's reading was the reason why he played this turn is he thought, okay, if White cuts me, then I'm going to cut them back. If they play on the left side, then I cut the right side. And you can see all of White stones die. So White can't play like that. White needs to play on the right side. But Black can connect through here, and again, all the White stones die. So that's not possible. And then, Rui Naiwe played this one forcing move that she had omitted before, fixing that cut naturally, and she would have continued to cut here and win the game if Lisa at all had allowed her. Instead, realizing that he's like instantly down by like, more than 10 points, Lisa at all resigns. <laughs> exciting game. Very exciting game. Um, I particularly enjoy how when two aggressive players play against each other, they tend to leave each other with dead groups, uh, or like mostly dead groups, quite often. <laughs> it's, uh, it's always a joy to see, you know, from the very beginning here, white was almost dead, and then she saved herself, and then black was kind of almost dead, but he saved himself very easily, and then white was kind of almost dead, but she saved herself pretty easily, and then black was getting attacked. And then Black was kind of almost dead again, but he did it on purpose so that he could save himself very easily. And then White was almost dead, but she did it on purpose so she could save herself. It's very ex exciting, right? Both players are very bold about uh, what types of positions they're willing to play. And <laughs> it makes for this back and forth crazy 
Very interesting game. I love to see it. Hope you guys enjoyed it too. And I'll be back for more videos. Uh, my <laughs> I know my upload schedule has been very poor this for last month. Uh, we're going to be back on the schedule now. I thank you all for watching. Make sure to subscribe so you can see the next videos. Good.